Armor-piercing pistol ammo is supposed to punch straight through. But what happens when AP ammo is designed to penetrate and expand on impact? Today we're putting old school military 9mm AP up against an experimental round. And the results might change everything you think about AP performance. Welcome back to 3R Ballistics, and in this video, we're taking a deep dive into two very different approaches to 9mm armor piercing ammo. On one side, we got the classic military AP round known for hard penetrating performance. On the other, we have an experimental expanding AP design, also known as an EAP, engineered not only to pierce armor, but to expand and transfer energy upon impact. We'll run both through armor, gel, and slow motion footage to see which design truly dominates. Raw penetration or expansion with penetration. So now we'll explain the technical information for this test. If you just want to skip to the testing at the range, there will be chapters added to the video, so feel free to skip ahead. Now an explanation on the rounds being used in these tests. We're trying to make these as fair as possible, so while they're technically 9mm projectiles, we'll be using different cartridges. So for this test, we'll be using both a 9mm and a 357 SIG. The 357 SIG utilizes a little bit more case volume for powder and uh, will give us a fair advantage while controlling these projectiles. Again, our control will be the 125 grain full metal jacket 357 SIG should be going around 1370 feet per second, giving us roughly 520 uh, foot pounds of mu muzzle energy. Our old school military AP round will be the Czech round, the Czech steel core, which was 100 grains roughly. These have been hand loaded because the primary issues we were seeing in the last video uh, with these. These should be going about 1450 feet per second, giving us roughly 470 foot pounds of muzzle energy. Now on to the experimental round and a little information about this experimental EAP projectile. We were very fortunate to have a designer on this project reach out to us about this round. This was something in development in the early 2000s. It was intended for military and law enforcement use in a sidearm only, so no barrel lengths longer than five inches. These projectiles utilized a tungsten ball and a lead core and a copper jacket. They were intended to be both a functional hollow point with a penetrating power. In theory, they sound great, but for nine millimeter, they were heavy. That created a velocity problem. The projectile came in at 128 grains. So unfortunately, this round never made it to production. Today, we're loading these in a 357 SIG. This 128 grain round should be going about 1350 feet per second, giving us roughly 518 foot pounds of muzzle energy. But will that be enough to make it a viable expanding AP round? Let's head out to the range and find out. So we're starting out with some aluminum. Like I said, we have full metal jacket. This is just Winchester target in practice. It's a 125 grain, should be going 1370. We will check velocity. Okay, you good? Okay, here we go. We'll go bottom left. 1358 feet per second clear. Okay, we have our first experimental round. What I forgot to mention is we are going to hit all of these, we'll mark them. We have polyethylene behind it to see if these penetrate a little bit more. I also forgot to mention, these are 128 grain, these are 125 grain. That was very close to velocity. Let's see what we get on this round. We will try to go, we'll just go to the right of that one. Okay, you good? Here we go. Woo! 
1321. That was interesting. We'll show you right after this one. This is the check round. This is about uh, 99 grains. We did notice a lot of the projectiles were actually two grains different in weight, which is probably why we had the inconsistency in velocity. And like I said, we are using the new Glock 17 Gen V. We will see what we get out of this. Okay, you ready? We'll go above those ones. Fourteen thirty-three feet per second. Clear. Here is the check round that we shot mild steel core. The 128 experimental with the tungsten ball, 125. As you can see, all three of them kind of went through. The 128 experimental round had a weird, uh, yeah, I don't even know what to call that. Let's see if I can get it out. No, that's that's in there pretty good. That seems to be the lead. So. How did they do on this? The FMJ did not uh, go through the first plate. The steel core definitely did. And we're going to check on this one real quick. I can't quite figure out what happened. Well, what do you know? It looks like they both stopped on the first plate. Right there. Nothing from the FMJ. There's the tungsten ball. There's the steel core. We're moving on to body armor. If this is supposed to be AP stuff, let's see. We have a body panel there for, uh, that's pure Kevlar, aramid fiber. It's rated for 357 SIG as it's noted on the label. We're gonna hit it with 357 SIG just to make sure this is FMJ. Should be going 1360 feet, 1370 feet per second. We'll try to hit it a little bit lower so we give room for the other ones. Okay, you ready? Here we go. Woo! 1369.3 clear. As it was designed to, it stopped that 357 SIG full metal jacket. Now we're moving on to the experimental round. We also turned the Kevlar around because this is the way, this is actually the strike base there, but uh, either way, we will go to the right. You good? Yep. Here we go. 1374 feet per second. Okay, that was a little surprising. Like I said, after this one, we will take you up there. But we got this check round. Should be going again around 1470 feet per second. We will try to go above that one. You good? Okay, here we go. 1442, clear.
I'm not even going to show you the full metal jacket. It did not go through. These are the two shots. This is our experimental. This is the Czech steel core. They both went through. They both went into this little gel block. Um, let me get a little water on this. Hold on just a second. Okay, now that we got some water on there, hopefully the sun shows. We got the two projectiles that went through. The bottom one seemed to take a little bit more material with it. Um, we'll fish these out at the end. Oh my goodness. That did expand in there. Okay, we'll take these out at the end, show you what we got. Now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. We're going straight to the experimental round. We have hard level three, uh, we have a hard polyethylene plate level three A. We uh, wanna see if it creates any difference. We are starting with the experimental expanding hollow point AP round, whatever you wanna call it. Okay, you good? I went dead center. <laughs> Woo, 1411. Clear. I'm not going to lie, I'm a little shocked by those results. We'll wait till we do the check round. This again should be going about 1470. Out of the glock gen v okay you ready mm -hmm. here we go Fourteen twenty-three feet per second clear this uh this was the experimental round. This was the check round. The check round went through. The experimental round is stopped right there. It is at the very, very end, but it was stopped by the polyethylene plate. So we have another check round. It is literally right there at the very, very back. That's where the check round is. But we are moving on. Well, it looks like that mild seal core check round, nine millimeters, doing a little bit better. We went ahead and put a level three AR500 plate. That's a quarter inch of AR500. It's angled off to the, so we don't have to worry about ricochets, but we're gonna see if any of these do any more different. I don't think it is. Start out with the 357C. This thing needs to be going 1700 feet per second. We'll go on the top left. You ready? Here we go. 1369 feet per second. Clear. Next up, check steel core. Let me raise this up a little bit. We'll go more centered. You good? Here we go. 1440 feet per second. Clear. So this has been hit quite a bit, but these are our two rounds. We hit right here and right here. And this is the surprising thing. That tungsten is obviously a harder material as seen by the damage to the AR500 plate. That being said, if it was going probably another 200 feet per second, maybe we could have considered it uh, going a little bit faster, but 
the nine millimeter here, that did nothing. We got nothing, no no significant dent, nothing really to, to, to write home about, as they say. But that tungsten definitely did some damage on that. Interesting, very interesting. We got one more. Okay, so our last experiment with this ball round, we got a homemade gel. This is a lot thicker. This is what you would consider a, uh, maybe a 25% ballistics gel. It's not a representation of human tissue or anything. We just want to see if we can get this to expand and the ball to continue without anything in front of it. So, here we go. You ready? Okay, that impressed me more than I thought. It did what it was designed to. The penetrating tungsten core went all the way through and everything else is left inside. So we're gonna go ahead and continue on. We're gonna do it with the steel core as well and see what the difference is, if that design is actually uh, doing what it's supposed to. We're gonna go right on top of that one and see what we get. You good? Here we go. So this is what we recovered from our homemade gel. This is our experimental hollow point AP round which I am surprised did very well in the gel. It was able to get through certain level 3A body armor, but it's just, it needs a little bit more speed. If you wanna see us, you know, make these a little bit hotter, let me know. And again, the check rounds, you know, once we got the primer issue sorted out, and these aren't even at plus P. These are going 1450 feet per second, on average, more or less, you know, we could obviously push these also into the 1500s if not a little bit higher if you want to see another test with those let me know this is the recovered projectile that we got when it went through uh, the body armor and into the gel this is the one that we got when it went through the body armor and into the gel you can see the very shiny tungsten ball that was there and this is what we recovered when this went into the gel the jacket and the lead stayed about four inches into the gel as the ball continued all the way through. So tell me what you think. Did this perform as you thought it would? You know, a hollow point AP round, can that be a viable thing? And next week we have some body armor sent in by GTS, gotta thank them and Buffman Range for setting in some ammunition for us to test. We've also been nominated for a Gundy. Thank you for all those out there. I will do a quick short video on that. Something fun. Let you know how you can vote for us. If not us, get on there and vote for your favorite YouTuber, your favorite gun enthusiast, just to show your support. And until the next one.